first down. It's Brown. He'll have another first down and more. And now running right through it. Still on his feet. Probably a good philosophy at this point. Going to make that defense stand up and stop him. On first down. It's Brown. He'll have another first down and more. And now running right through it. Still on his feet. Touchdown. What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube? Man, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like button. Please comment. Please get going. This is the Week Run Review. This is the Needed Podcast. We are on episode 41. 41 weeks, man. Let's talk about Madden. It's been a week since the game has come out. That's pretty much what the whole show going to be about. The game has been out for a week. So it gives us... Last week, we talked about our initial reactions. We talked about the arm bar with Mo, who came on and... uh. We kind of agreed the armbar was a little bit crazy. I'm, I'm messing up a little bit. Hold on. Let's go to my – make sure my my things are popping right. Okay, okay. But like I said, this is like – this is week one. So we get a better idea about um, about what the game is like, what what uh, our opinions on the game. And there's, there's pretty much – I broke it down to three, three specific uh, categories – and that, that pretty much what we've been talking about the most is, is people fumbling a lot. We're talking about lurking. Like, did they take the lurk away? And we're going to talk about the X Factors, which is pretty much the biggest topic of discussion so far in the man's season. Uh, but first, I want to tell you guys, man, I haven't played a lot of regs, but I'm going to start playing a lot of regs. I uh, made a huge deal with Players Lounge, man. Me, Clef, and, and Boo Painter are going to stream a lot of regs. Money games on Players Lounge, over $20 matches. Uh, to play some regs, get ready for the Madden Classic, man. Players Lounge is a great spot for you guys to play for money. It doesn't have to be $20. It doesn't have to be $10. It can be $3. It can be $5. Uh, but it can definitely get you good reps, and those are the best reps you want to have in order to get better at the game, honestly. So there's great promotions as far as uh, they're going to give away NFL tickets to whoever plays the most $20 games for the month. So that's a big deal. Uh, definitely look for how... Definitely look for much more things from uh, us and Players Lounge working together. Needed Gaming and Players Lounge, man. I want to make it the the top site in the country for you guys to gamble some Madden on. And that's what it's about. Uh, but there's definitely some things uh, in Madden we want to talk about. And um, like I said, I'm close to 900 subs on the stream. I'll take a look and tell you guys where I'm at right now. I want to tell you guys about Wednesday sub stream only. That's uh, as I have 890 subs um, what Wednesday substream only is, it's going to be Wednesday. Last week it was 10 p.m. I was set your notifications because a lot of people said that was a little bit late. But what it's going to be is just we're just going to lab on. It's going to be my subs only in the chat asking me questions about Madden, how to get better, how they can improve their game. It can be the smallest thing for how do I run the ball better or how do I stop a corner route out a bunch when it's on the short side. It could be the most elaborate thing to the easiest, most basic thing. So don't think that you're, like, far behind, man. If you're subbed and you come in here and ask questions, I will help you guys as much as possible. Clef is going to be able to be doing the same thing as well uh, from his point of view. So make sure you guys sub to both me and Clef. And you'll have the opportunity to check out those sub streams and be able to get better at Madden, honestly. Um, that that That's pretty much um the main things I wanted to tell you guys about. That Wednesday we're going to have sub streams. Uh, weekend wheel is coming up soon with problem. That's definitely gonna be something we're looking forward to. I know all you guys are looking forward to weekend league as am I. I've uh, been grinding the hell out this man so far this year, and you guys have been supporting it fully. Definitely started. Uh, definitely started going. Uh, everything's going well. So I'm, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys are having fun playing man. And one thing I want to talk about, as I see Taylor Gang in the chat, man. Taylor Gang is he is the number one player on Xbox. Uh, he is, he is, uh, and, and it's a little bit crazy to me. And we'll go and we'll take a look at some things, really. Drop picks, drop picks compared to last year. And this is, this is, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, there's things we can talk about. Let, let's, let's, there's a lot of things to talk about, honestly. And, and drop picks are one of them. Um, but I will, Taylor Gang is number one in the world. So, uh, listen, you guys don't really know Taylor Gang. He's not a person that's been in live events. He's not a person that really has a mic, but he's been streaming a lot. And I told him, man, just keep grinding and keep streaming. And you're going to make a name for yourself. And not only is he going to make a name for himself, but he is the number one player in the world. So you guys can check this out right here. You know what I'm saying? He's the number one player in the world. Now, me, myself, I feel like 
my record is better than him. I feel like Problem's record is better than him. I feel like K-Max record is better than him. I feel like Hustle Pilsen record is better than him. I feel like D. Croft record is better. Uh, maybe not D. Croft. D. Croft is about the same. But he is number one. Um, This is how I judge. This is how I judge like the best players for me. Like Point differential. Points they give up. Points they score. Things like that. But, but that's how. I, but I'm gonna bring Tech in here so we can talk to him because apparently he is the new problem. That's what I said, and I got I got to talk about some things, man. There's not the everybody has a lot of losses, man. But but I'm gonna say my man, my man Trey won't come talk, man. You see, that's what I be talking about. You try to bring the young boys on the stream, and they don't got their mic ready. My fella was talking about this mic being a yo, yo, yo. What's up? What's going on? So, so, so I got to talk about this, this record right here. Do you feel you should be the number one player in the world as we go back uh, to this record? I mean, subtract, subtract. I have 43 disconnect we losses. We all do. Them. We all do. Oh, yeah, we all do? Yeah, of course. Well, well, how the leaderboard goes then? Probably not. I mean, I would still easily be top five because, I mean, if you even look at the top eight players... I see three that I can say that were probably better better Madden players than me. Three. Mm. Mm. Like Jack has no business being there. Mm. Eris Tan Diego, he has mm. no business being there. Mm. Hustle Hustle Pilsen hasn't sniffed a win against me. Mm. Okay. Uh Snaffa, no Snaffa, business. Look at this. Mm. Uh, Decroft me Decroft for one and one, so mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, definitely top five. So who has a winning record versus you in this top ten? In this top ten, everybody. Um, nope. Me and K Mac are even at two and two. Problems up on me two to three. You're up on me one to three, and that's mm. it. Mm. Everyone else in D Cross one and one. Everybody else in the Madden community is is under me. Mm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Oh, but actually, actually, I lied. Fa Fancy's not there. Fancy beat me. Fancy's a good. Fancy's okay. good. Okay. I haven't beat Fancy. Okay. Nice. 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 Okay. So. So you're feeling good about it. So so talk about cause I, I I felt like you were ass last year. Not ass, but like you weren't like you ain't taking none. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like tears. When I say ass, I mean compared to myself. I felt mm -hmm. like you were ass last year. Talk about the mindset going from last year, going into this year. What did you want to improve on? Uh kind of just getting a justy pre snap. Mm. Honestly. That my big thing is being real creative on defense and it took a lot of me watching mostly players like Clef get real adjusting in their three three five for me to start catching on mm. and now pre-snap like it might say cover two it might say cover one but it, it definitely ain't that it looks nothing mm -hmm. like it so okay okay yeah. there you go that's not my, there you go so um all right now i, I sent you the number one player i feel like we can ask you a lot of these questions about different things and the, and the first thing we want to talk about and we talked about this a little bit before the show is the fumbles now mm -hmm. It's I, I feel personally that the fumbles is cool. I honestly feel like I feel like um hit sticking is too easy. Uh especially on Mutt. Everybody can hit stick. There's no point in having the, the cards that can hit I feel like they all can hit. Although I will tell you the linebackers hitting for themselves is a terrible thing. The computer hitting for them for the for the user is a terrible thing. I think it's too easy to hit stick. So therein lies the problem with the fumbles and there are ways to avoid fumbles. A lot of times, uh, you don't need a sideline just so you don't fumble. And even if you do fumble, the ball goes out of has a fifty percent chance of going out of bounds if you do fumble. So that's one way that you I mean it's tough to live over the middle of the field because you do run into that risk. Uh, but a lot of people are complaining about the fumbles. And me personally, I feel like they will tune the fumbles because they want people playing the game. At the end of the day. It's about playing the game, and people are going to turn off mad if they fumble too much, and they're going to go play Fortnite where they don't fumble. They don't have to worry about that. So that's pretty much why I think they will tune fumbles. Uh, but I want to hear what you think about fumbles because you had said it earlier, and it was interesting. Well, I believe that when it comes to – I think that the whole Madden community doesn't really value the football. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this whole game, how it is right now, has taught people the value of a possession. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many ways you cannot fumble conservative I, I literally run around holding rb i run because I, I don't think people realize 
No, you can't spin and juke while you're holding the RB running with the football. But you sprint the exact same speed as you would without holding RB. And I don't think people even realize that. Yeah. I do a lot of uh, protecting the ball, getting out of bounds, getting down. Like, people are complaining about fumbles when they're trying to juke on the sideline against a two-on-one. Like, I have two defenders there. One of them are hit-sticking you. It's a two-on-one. Ball should be popping out if you're trying to chuck and jive. That's yeah. how I. That's how I feel. For sure. Now, I mean, I do feel like I do fumble on conservative, but I think you should be able to fumble on conservative because I don't think there should be any any anything in the game where it's impossible to fumble. I think yeah, that will also no be because, bad and be boring to watch if you can't cause like, fumble. Because, like, let's say I'm uh, using my Patrick Mahomes or whatever, and I'm on conservative. I need to scramble, pick up five yards, and I'm holding RB. Being on conservative, conservative and holding RB shouldn't stop Jamal Adams from popping the ball out when he hit sticks you. Yeah, like that's that's sure. the stuff I'm talking about. For sure. I mean, yeah, I, I think I think the fumbles are annoying, but I think it's the least of the problems that I like. I think uh they make it they do make it and, and I've been told a lot of things I say I've been told in, in meetings with EA is that they want little Johnny, little Jimmy, little Ray to feel the power of buying the new Bobby Wagner. Or I just got the, I just pulled the new Ken Houston. I want Ken Houston to do a lot of the work for me. And that's something that EA has, you know, told us that, man, it has to mean something to buy that Ken Houston. Because, yeah, I can buy Ken Houston, and I can use Ken Houston that much better than Little Johnny. But at the, at the end mm-hmm. of the day, they want Little Johnny to want to buy that card because it's doing a little bit more for him. And so far in this week of man, I've noticed that, you know, these good cards are playing a lot better than, you know, gold cards or, or you know, base elites. As they or should. But as they you know. should, though. I mean, uh, this this is a matter where they made the good players stand out. I mean, that's something we complained about, and now good players stand out, and now we're complaining again. No, I mean, I don't understand. I, I understand that good players are, are good. They are. They're amazing. Um, but it, it it just adds that much more to you. Got to have a team, man. You got to grind Madden, and it has to almost be a job for you. You can't just casually play Madden, or at least you can't casually play Madden Ultimate Team. That's the biggest. That's yeah, you, that's the thing. You got to really lock yeah, in on you this. Can't. You can't casually put Madden Ultimate Team. You take a you take a three week break and you're so far behind, you're gonna be getting popped. Yeah, sure. Especially uh, they already put popped. tons of tons of different content out, and uh, the, the good players are definitely you gotta have them at this point. But really. but like what you're saying about little Johnny getting the new Ken Houston, yeah, this new Ken Houston might make me fumble, but I mean I know how to not get hit by that Ken Houston. I know how to avoid taking those big hits. So mm-hmm. I mean, you can. It sucks, man. The fumbles suck when they happen to you, honestly. I, I don't have that problem much because I just go out of your way to protect the football. Get mm-hmm. down. Stop sucking and jiving. Possession catch. Like, just value that football, honestly. Yeah, for sure, especially when you get into these big, you know, these big tournament games and everything. You really do have to value that football and shoot. Do hold that RB. Do fall down. Do throw the ball near the sideline. There are some times, obviously, where – you know, you throw a post route or something, you really can't move when you're going to get hit. And it's just that that happens from time to time. But, uh, See, but but the possession catches in this Madden we're playing right now are so good, you're usually getting down automatically for possession in the, in catches. Possession. Yeah. That's one thing that is frustrating. And, chat, you guys talk about this. Is these possession catches, is these aggressive diving catches that, honestly, the wide receiver should be in the hospital after some of these plays, you know, and you're just not allowed to touch the wide receiver. You know, and that's something that's frustrating. Uh, it's something that was like that in Madden 18 where I feel like a possession catch was you couldn't touch him. But now, Madden 19, it was a lot easier to, you know, knock the ball out of possession catches. Now, they're just, I feel like they're getting down and you can't even you can't even touch them when they're falling to the ground. And that's something that's frustrating to me, and I know you guys are on defense, all right? I like the possession catches. I'm not going to like the ass because, I mean, you can get hit. I mean, because if you don't, you're going to get hit and you're going to fumble. So, I mean, the only possession catch I'm not a big fan of is the diving forward, two arms out, just safe. Like, you can't, no one can touch that animation. But the other ones are, are pretty, I like them. I, got, I have no problem with people's possession catching. No, I, I feel like sometimes, I mean, there's really not, I guess it's not that big a deal. But for me, there's times where I want, my, I want my safety to take somebody's head off. I want my safety to knock the ball loose. And because they're getting a certain animation, uh, now all of a sudden you can't. You know, you can't touch the wide receiver. So, for me, that's definitely a frustrating part about the game is some of these possession catches are pretty wild. 
Uh, and then, I'm not gonna lie, but but you have yeah. to admit some of them are pretty cool. Like a lot of the end zone possession catches, getting the knee down, sliding. Though they're really cool, but some of them need to be getting touched in the middle of the field. Definitely, I agree. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, it is cool. They do have a bunch. I do feel like they have a bunch of new animations in the game. Uh, it's definitely something that's that's good I, for little Johnny. Loves the new animations. You know I will say this: a, a lot of these, some of these sideline catches, one foot is getting down, and they're counting as catches. A lot of them. Yeah, I feel like the sideline is really easy to catch the ball. Uh, it's the the way the wide receiver plays on the sideline is great. They can definitely even slow down and catch the ball on the sideline and. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, shoot, pretty much how you guys should really try to, to you know, tend to put your offense to the sideline because one, it, it's hard to get hit. You go out of bounds, boom. And if you do fumble, it is going out of bounds. It won't be uh, you know recovered inbounds. So that's pretty much why people like throwing uh, towards the sideline for the most part. One, you catch a good two, it's less likely that you're going to fumble. And we talk about the possession catches, and, and that, that that brings us to the whole the way the linebackers lurk, and, and not even the linebackers. I, I just, at this point, I feel like it's everybody. I don't feel like it's something they talk about where if you put a safety linebacker, he's going to move like a linebacker. Mm-mm. For me, I don't. I, I feel like I move the same if I'm, I, I me, myself, I have a user to safety probably 90 to 95% of the plays on defense. So for me, um, I, I've noticed the user being a little bit weak. And, and not so much a little bit weak, but a little bit different. And part of this, to me, goes to kind of how Identifier is. It's a simple thing in the game that they essentially make us have an ability to have. And I don't know what this lurking, the lurking thing is going to be, what his ability is going to be. Is he going to be outrageous? Is it going to be like the old ball hawk? Are they going to make us buy an ability for a player to be able to lurk like we could in the past? I think ultimately that's pretty crazy that you could go ahead and, and all of a sudden now I have to pay for what I was able to do for free the last couple of years. Um, I, and and there are some good things about it uh, because like a lot of people in chat, it is pretty wild that Anthony Barr could cover the whole middle of the field. Now they can't. Now I feel like it's, it's the complete opposite. You really can't cover. You have to be pretty much guarding a wide receiver, really lowered the lurk and just allowed uh, people to be able to, almost throw right at you or anything, but how do you feel about the lurk? How do you feel about the user in general when playing I defense? F- I feel like I get a lot of I get a lot of alligator arm animations when I was jumping. That's one thing. I get a lot of alligator arm animations with Shay's ear. And then maybe I'll uh use her like an Amos and I'm still getting some of these like alligator arm animations. The only player that really jumps for me is Ken Houston. And I don't know if there's some kind of jumping threshold. Or anything like that, I haven't checked out. But the only player for me that jumps right now is Ken Houston. But my biggest problem is I can I can deal with alligator arms. It's just they try to make it so you have to be in absolute perfect position to get a pick. There's no more ball hawk is pulling me four yards in front of the uh, receiver mm-hmm. to pick off a drag and stuff like that. And today, adjusting to that, like I was playing fancy, just throwing a lot of drag routes, and I just could not pick them. Like I could not. I'm diving. I'm and my DBs are just missing. So mm-hmm. I kind of like that. But like you're not ball hawking to four yards away. Ball hawk is usually meant for, like, balls that are lofted in the air, not, like, mm-hmm. drags and stuff like that. But the yeah. alligator arms, that, that, that it is getting annoying. It's yeah, getting for annoying. sure. And I think it's one thing that I have definitely gotten used to. Not not gotten used to. I'm getting used to, if that makes sense. Uh, just being able to be in the right spot to catch picks. Even when you're clicking on, you, you can't. A lot of times I've seen a lot of people, the ball go over their face. They don't get the same, uh, or they don't get the animation that they want. And for the most part, uh, once we get used to it, I think it'll be okay. I, I'm just stuck on the fact I think they removed the ball hawk so they could then make it an ability, which is kind of crazy to me. I think that's that's how it goes, uh, how it is. Man, it's a lot of things. I mean, conductor, they took away the ability to do multiple hot routes. Now you can buy it for an ability. And I feel like that's what they're slowly doing with lurking. But I will reserve that judgment until I see what this lurk ability is and what the wide receiver can or what the DB can do when he has this ability. How do you uh how do you feel about z- how the zones play? Well, I see Wesley in the middle of the field. At happy birthday to Wesley. He is a whole he he is I Wesley might be 19. His hair is is 37. 15. No, his hair is 37. He got the old comb over, you know. And uh but <coughs> Wesley said yellow zones and linebackers. 
I think linebacker zones are absolutely terrible. And this is a man that has won, run 3-4 pretty much the whole year till today. Uh, when I ran a little bit more dollar. But I ran 3-4. And a lot of times what I would do, obviously I blitz the hell out of people. So this has a lot of people max protecting, blocking the whole team. Even to the point where they would block, you know, ten, what, nine people or or eight people. They'd block eight people, have a quarterback, two routes on the field. And I and sometimes I would then drop all my linebackers in zones and the man up. And, and I felt like the linebackers could cover nothing when they were in the zones. Uh, I, yeah, I, I feel just, like but... I feel like when you shade down, the linebackers do absolutely nothing. That's one thing. But, but like, let's say, like, people are loving how you can just dot the seams and stuff like that this year. Yeah. Now, the the ability to do that has kind of made their – like, there's so many more offenses you can run now, honestly. Because I feel like if they made it to where those linebackers are playing things like they were in Madden 19, we'd be back to seeing three off- three different offenses on the field every time we uh, play a game. Yeah. Like, those, the linebackers not being that great has opened up so much. And it's kind of – the zones are inconsistent. Like, sometimes I'll put a mid-read on a post and it'll match. Sometimes it won't. The, mm-hmm. the zones are inconsistent, I'd say that, but I, I am kind of a fan of being able to throw it right over a linebacker because, I mean, that's what these ball trajectories are for. That's why they added that now. Yeah, I I, uh, I guess so. I mean, I'm not – listen, I, I do think the, the, the yellow zones are – I haven't had the yellow zone make a play for me pretty much all year. I haven't had cloud zones make plays for me all year. Deep blues, I, I want to say they suck. But I don't think they're as bad as yellow zones or, or cloud zones, really. Yeah, the yellow the yellows are really bad. Yeah. I'm little Johnny in this case. I like them being bad, but they're really bad. Yeah, you like snap throwing a seam on a streak and yeah. throw it. Yeah. See, I mean, I I think that as far as seams, it should be it, that should be just a shade down or shade up thing. Really, I think if you shade up, you should run with the seam. Well, and well I mean, if them, someone comes out, someone comes out and cover three, and I and I snap a four verts. Quick as hell. I mean, I, I would assume my wide receiver would be able to get my slot wide receiver should be able to get behind that linebacker and just I should be able to rocket that in there every time. Because yeah. unless it's a user, I should be able to every time. That I don't care if you shade up or down, my receiver needs to be behind that linebacker every time. I mean, yeah. I mean that's the op- that's the open part in the scene. I mean, you don't want that pass to be thrown. Man it up. Man is so good this year. Man some stuff up. I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I'm covered through. Or the seams have always been pretty much the hole in cover three. Uh, so, honestly, but yeah, the the fact deep blues I feel are very passive. Um, deep blues are very they play back. They don't play aggressive. And then on top to add the, the deep blues being passive, and add the yellow zones not being good, that leaves your slot or yeah your slot seam that much more open. So it's definitely tough. Uh, you know, I mean, sometimes, sometimes, I, and honestly, I wish I had more slot, go to slot a little bit sooner. Honestly, I wish I had add that to my game, but um, just gotta get used to the way the zones are and used to the way the user are. We've been playing a game for four years now where the user just makes wild plays, and to play for one week and just get used to the fact the user's not gonna make a play is pretty is is a pretty big adjustment that I I'm not good at yet. I'm still afraid of the user over the middle of the field. What was Mad Nineteen? No, Mad Nineteen. I. Man, 19 zones were the, well. The zones were good, but just the fact that I can click on any linebackers jumping 20 feet in the air, kind of like, like there's so much stuff you can't run. Like in Mad 19, I can't snap throw a four verts against a cover three because they're clicking on and the linebacker is more athletic than my wide receiver. Unless I'm highballing and cheating you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I want to say Mad 19 was perfect. I really don't remember. I feel like every game is different. Just gotta get used to. Uh... Yeah. See, I don't think offense is that easy. I... I think that people, I think people would not complain about the zones this year if you could click on and jump like you could last year. They wouldn't be complaining yeah, about the zones. Yeah, that goes into. I feel like the zones have the same lack of ball hawk as the user does. I feel like you can't click on. You can't click on and jump with the zones, like you just can't jump with your user. I feel like it's the same type of thing. Uh, that the, the zones aren't jumping and making plays unless it's a corner in a cloud flat. We'll jump every once in a while. But linebackers damn sure ain't jumping anywhere. I mean, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. Yeah, I mean, I, I see Jay Bird in the chat saying offense is the easiest it's ever been, and I and I agree. And I kind of, I mean, I like it that way. There's more offenses you can run now. The game's more creative on offense now since 
zones are zones kind of suck. We're not not everyone's just in bunch and trips that in anymore. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is how, this is how I always thought about Madden, and Jet was one of the first people that told me this. He said something has to be hard to do. Offense or defense has to be hard because that will make a good player that much better. If it's hard to play defense, the good player will be able to play defense. If it's hard to play offense, the good offense player will be able to play offense. No matter what it was, you need one to be hard. And right now, I'm, I'm feeling like neither are really that hard. And that brings me to the, to the fourth point I want to talk about. Neither are really that hard, mostly because the, these X factors. And I feel like as we play this game in a week, I would feel... I want to say 75 to 80 percent of the game is about these X factors and mm-hmm. using these X, X factors. I think that is pretty much how the game is being played now. And I think it does make defense easy because of this, the way the black sheds are with these X factors. It makes offense easy because you can just press A and run people over. And, and that that's pretty much how I feel about, you know, both. It just the X factors is kind of making this game easy for people. How do you feel about the X Factors and what they brought to the game in the first week? <coughs> well, the first thing I'll say, I think that I think that defense is really hard when you don't have X Factors on your D linemen. Like I was struggling stopping kids until I got Von Miller. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't get any pressure until I got Von Miller. Like I get Von Miller, I can run three three five again, I can run dollar. Like before that I couldn't. And then offensively offensively I feel like the only X factors that work so far are the running back ones. I mean I don't of course, the the wide receiver ones are actually good too. Yeah. Well, the abilities are good. The X factors don't really work. Like the double me and rack them up. Like I haven't seen any of those things work in my favor ever. Well, they're tough. I've not to, seen them. Work. Yeah, they're tough to get because you have to equip like the homer stuff and the inside stuff to make sure you uh, can actually actually these X factors be something that's achievable. Because uh, I know mm-hmm. for the rack them up was five 20 yard catches man if you're catching five 20 yard catches you deserve to get something and the defense deserves to get punished if they're giving up that much uh but yeah like i said with the x factors i do feel and and wesley said exactly what i said in chat is that you know pass rushers make make i mean defense easy you know Mm -hmm. and and for me that's pretty much been the toughest thing to play against and i've seen uh clef i've watched clef i've watched henry play and I play, and I feel like it is the best defense to just put three X factor D linemen and just rush three people. And without uh, the mobility of the quarterback is not that mobile, so you don't need to spy all the time. And the, the three, the, one of those D linemen is going to fight. And, and and the biggest thing for me with the D linemen is they beat a double team so easily, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I think a double team. I, a lot of times I'll look, I'll snap the ball and say, "Ooh, a double team. That's good." And, and you, you have these guys with these X factors beating double teams like. Two, like the two people, I have two elites. It's not like I have two golds or two power up 10 caps. I have two elite linemen getting beat by an elite, obviously a better player. I'll have two 85 linemen getting beat by a 90. It just happens too fast. And, and it gets well, to a point where three people, even when you block the running back, essentially you have three double teams and one of those guys is winning, honestly. And one thing I will say about the X Factors, when I, when I look at the who in the community is complaining about defensive X factors and stuff like that. It's the players who are offensive players. It's which is weird. Like Joe Rice, like I consider him an offensive player. The offensive side of the ball has so many abilities and X factors, it's not even funny. Right. The agree. slot machine, slot route specialist, and plus now I can have route technician to make my routes even crispier. Like mm-hmm. Marcus Allen can juke can juke and spin. Tariq Cohen's out here juking my whole team. They have arm bar. The, the offense has a lot. Defense really doesn't have a lot. I mean, like I'm not out here putting secure tackler on my Shazier. Like the, 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 no one's using those things. And, and I will tell you, if you guys watched today, I did put a secure pass blocker on my right tackle. Now it cost one of my offensive, one of my offensive abilities, one of my three offensive abilities. But I actually, he actually was a dog. My right tackle was a dog. So I feel like if you, if you do have that counter, if you do have secure pass blocker, I think that will definitely um. Wesley, you're right about that. That'd be tough. If they, <laughs> no, but I do feel like if the secure pass blocker stops these edge threats or stops these X Factor D linemen, at least takes them to normal people, uh, or takes them yeah to normal D linemen. I think that'll be a good thing because then you can balance it out. Yeah, it sucks to have to um, it sucks to have to waste some of your offensive abilities on offensive linemen, 
But if, if it's going to stop defense, if I got secure pass blockers and you have two defensive linemen that are uh, X factors and I stop that, I feel like that's be really good. Um, yeah. yeah uh, go ahead. One, one thing I'll say, a tip is, and if you are going to do the secure pass blocker thing, just do it on both sides. I had a kid have a secure pass blocker on his right tackle, stopping my Von Miller. All I did was put Von Miller on the other side. It's literally all I did. Yeah. And now he's back Now he's back to business. So. A DN would run shutter. Yeah, Wesley, I, first of all, I, I, I feel like I feel like all passers and runners, we all have the same opinion is that it'd be really good um, if the run, if there was something to stop the run. The, the run being easy makes the game, it makes everybody want to play the game. It makes everybody able to play the game. It makes everybody able to compete because the game is short. They can run the ball. Boom. But at the same time, that's where it goes to, well, the good players will find run defense. You know, good players have a skill gap. Me myself, I on mutt, I'm not worried about the run. I haven't. Pl- I've played probably five games of regs, and it was against my friend who passes all the time. So I'm not even gonna comment on what regs. But if you want to see regs this week, we'll definitely be streaming a lot of players lounge, players lounge matches. We'll be playing a lot more regs. So as far as regs is concerned, I feel like I, I feel like I can't really comment. And what from what I watch, I've watched every game. I've watched Beast Mode win the Mudhead. I've watched all these mudhead competitions. There's another one tomorrow night, I believe. So for me, I feel like I, I think the run is too too easy. And on top of that, with the X factor doing work for people, I think it it, it really makes it too easy, essentially. But as when the run is good, I honestly when the run is good, I feel like man is bad. I, that's just that's just how how I feel. Uh, but you guys know how I feel about the run. I, I hate the shit. I it's just. It's just like why run when you can pass. That's pretty much, <laughs> pretty much how I feel about Madden. Why why take three four yards in a cloud of dust when you can take ten to twenty every play? I, that's pretty yeah, much I, how I feel. I I'm okay with how the run game is, except for the arm bar. I feel like the arm to be an X factor. Like you need to have five yards, five rushes of ten plus yards, and then you can have the stiff arm thing. That's how I feel. But other than that, I think the, I think the run is pretty okay. A lot of people. I'm not going to lie. Some people who complain about the run being too good are coming out in dollar trying to stop I form. Like, you're not even trying to stop the run. That's why you're getting ran on some of them. But overall, the, the run blocking is pretty, pretty good. Nothing I had too much trouble with, but the arm bar definitely needs to be fixed. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, and this is crazy what I say, but we, we, when we first heard about the X factors, everybody was like, oh, this shit's going to be bad. That was pretty much the vibe that everybody got right away. From the X Factor, like oh, as soon as we want them to remove abilities, we want to remove playmaker, we want to remo- remove the Yu-Gi-Oh shit. They add X Factors to make it that much more. And, and as far as I'm seeing, that's pretty much how it is. Like this is the the X Factors are the Yu-Gi-Oh mutt. It's just on steroids, pretty much. And and at this point in the game, I would say it, the game be better without them. You know, it, 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 there's some that are obviously cool. Uh, obviously, people want the hot rod abilities. Some of Brady stuff is cool. But honestly, if you took took these, if you took the abilities out of the game, would it be a better game? That, that that's how I'm feeling about it right now. If we if you took out took out X factors, it'd be a better game right now. Maybe not more fun for little Johnny. Maybe not more exciting. Maybe not more marketable. Maybe they can't market it as well because they don't have these new factors. As we heard Rex say on his podcast, is that they want to add something new to the game that they can market every year. But honestly, at this point. I feel it would be better without the X factors. What they won't get rid of, but they definitely got to find a balance for them, and that's pretty much how how I feel about it right now. The, I think the X factors are good for EA. I mean, the game might be better. I was yeah, the game would be better without the X factors and kind of the X factor things could be the player traits. Honestly, some people are good edge rushers. They have pass rush moves, swim moves. Those could be kind of the X factors. Honestly, if you took them out. Mm-hmm. Because there's some players that that you know are going to shed because they have the tr- the traits for it, and some you know they just won't. Like Von Miller is going to play different than Deion Jordan on the end, yeah. like regardless of the, if he has an X factor or not. I don't think it's always been like that. I always think a Von Miller stuff was better than a shitter, really. But for me, uh, should be. I mean, Jesus, I, I I'm a, to me a lot of this one hinge on how good the secure pass blocker is because. For me, if that stops the X factor D lineman, that's a big deal. You know, I, I think that'll dumb that down. The arm bar is pretty crazy. The juke stuff is, is pretty wild too. But uh, 
it is it is pretty wild just to uh, as a base ability, you know. And, and one thing that Skimble had had mentioned too was that we should ha- be able to have abilities. Your abilities shouldn't be all three. Like you can't have all three down linemen. You got to have one on each level of defense, like your linebacker, your D line, and then your secondary if you want it. In offense, you can have it. Maybe on a wide receiver, one quarterback, and a running back. That's it. Not three wide receivers or three down linemen or three DBs. Maybe kind of balance mm-hmm. where you put the X factors. Yeah, that would balance it. That would be a little bit more balanced. I like that idea. Yeah. So because right now, I, like I said, the three, the three D linemen with the X factors is pretty wild, and I well, really don't know what uh. It's it's what give and take are. though because let's say that. I'm playing against you, and you have three down linemen that are all X factored up, but then I have three O linemen that are all X factored up. I mean, that should neutralize it. I mean, I personally, offense is so much better if you have a route specialist dude. Like, it mm-hmm. takes your offense to the absolute next level. Like, the gap between running an offense with and without one is ridiculously huge, like mm-hmm. ridiculously huge. Because every, like you said, like you were saying earlier, every stock route in the game, every stock hot route, hot route in the game is bagged by man. Every yeah. single one of them. So, I mean, if you want to put three secure pass blockers on your line and then just be getting clamped by man, I mean, go ahead. If that works for you, I mean, at least you won't be getting shedded. If you can find a way to not get shedded, I mean, it makes your offense better. I'm all for it. Yeah. I honestly would feel to the point where uh, I, I the way my right tackle was playing today, uh, and, I, and I knew I was playing against somebody that did the three-man rush thing. It depends on different people played differently, but I knew if I was playing against the three-down rush guy, Maybe I would rock two secure tacklers and one hot route guy. Um, I think that would be tough. Uh, I think that's very possible that people do it. I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a possibility. It's something that the Skimbo has been using secure pass blockers since they put him in the game. So I think it's probably something that he might try. And, and honestly, my right tackle was holding it down. And I think if you do, and honestly, to me, if you do waste an ability on an offensive lineman, it should be a pretty goddamn serious ability. It shouldn't be work sometime, work all the time. If I have secure pass blocker on my tackle and he's a dog, I, that that whoever the end is, I don't care if the end is Jesus himself. If I sacrifice my offense that much to have an ability on an offensive lineman, that end shouldn't get home pretty much the whole time. I mean, it should almost be like a contain to the point where that secure pass blocker is popping. You know, and, and, and that's that's how I feel about an offensive lineman having the ability. Uh, and that's how, I mean, but like I said, we're working for me. Um, I just gotta find a way to balance it. And, and but then, people aren't gonna, but people aren't gonna put secure pass blocker. They want to, they, they want their offense to look too cute with all the route runners. They're not gonna do it. They're not even listening to. They're not gonna do it. I mean, I, like I said, I, I think it's possible to put it both side, put one on both tackles and one one round specialist. I think that's gonna be good. And then finally, I'll tell you this. Finally, that's an opportunity for us to say that offensive line is going to matter. Offensive line is going to cost cap. It's something that hasn't happened in the last four years. You know what I'm saying? In the last four years in Madden. And now if the offensive line is going to cost, you know, 50 cap for each tackle, that's going to, that's going to be a big deal if it works. And it should, if it works that well, it would be tough. You know, but if I knew... If I knew somebody had secure pass blockers, maybe I wouldn't try. I would probably run a different defense, you know. Like, that's pretty much so, I, so it's like I've played, I've played so many games. It's like I played over three hundred games, and I can honestly say, me personally, other than armbar, there's not anything in the game that doesn't have a counter to it. Like there, everything has a counter to it. It just depends on your play style. Mm-hmm. That's my personal opinion. I mean, the alligator arm thing sucks. There's no counter to that, but. Other than that, like the abilities and stuff, there's a counter to usually every ability and everything going on with the game. Like people complain about stopping the run. Well, how about you come out a dollar or come out a quarter and come to something heavier? Yeah, I don't think the I don't think the run as far as mutt. Like I said, I can't speak on rays. This week we'll play a lot more rays. But as far as mutt, I'm really not. Um, I'm really not concerned with the run defense. Really, I'm really not. And as far as like the juking and jiving of the. Uh, like the, you said, a running back, like that goes to back to the fumbles, you know, and that's where mm-hmm. it's like you can't be too mad about the fumbles, and that's pretty much going to be your counter for juking and doing the spin moves and evasive and everything because, with Marcus because Allen. Mark, Mark, Marcus Allen has made me look stupid trying to hit stick him all over the field, making me mm-hmm. look dumb. But when I finally catch him, he pops, he coughs it up. If I finally catch mm-hmm. him, he coughs it up, and that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. For sure, I mean. Because he's ridiculous, Marcus Allen's—he's ridiculous. Yeah, 
Yeah, Marcus Allen looks like he's playing a different game than everybody else. He, he, he's he's playing Madden 19. It's literally Madden 19 Marcus Allen versus Madden 20 everything else. Yeah. I mean, uh, there goes to the point where little Johnny bought his cards, little Johnny paid it, bought his bundle, and he has Marcus Allen. Now he has Marcus Allen with a little X under his feet that lights up. Uh, so it was worth it for him. Uh, I'm, I'm glad the dollar is not getting pancakes. That's, that's like something that. that's special for me. Uh, and, and really, honestly, for me, it's like this. It's like dollar chat, and I'll tell you what, it's essentially the same thing as 34. It's three down linemen, it's two linebackers, and instead of your two outside linebackers, you just have two DBs. Yeah, obviously, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, they don't block shit. I don't think they block shit at all, but what happens mm-hmm. a lot of times is the offensive line are too fat and slow. That these DBs will just slither around and get through the defensive linemen. So that's pretty much how Dollar becomes good run defense. Uh, but I don't, I don't think it's good run defense. I don't. Not yet. I mean, it could get a lot better uh, as the year goes on and people get better at running Dollar. But uh, right now, I don't think it's that amazing as far as run defense goes. I like I like the no pancaking. I haven't seen a single pancake animation, and I, and I like it. I honestly like it. Yeah. That's all. I don't think the run is terrible. Is is that obnoxious? It's not that annoying, except for armbar. Honestly, everything else I can do with just armbar is just a little. <laughs> armbar is a little much. Some of these videos I see look like Marshawn Lynch, prime Marshawn Lynch, and it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, for sure. Now, now, this I tell you. Now, the people said so. Apparently, you're the new problem. Since you're number one in the world, is that is that how you feeling? Like you have sur- surpassed problems? Nah, man. Nah, not 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 yet. That's the old goat. That's that's the dude I watched playing Madden growing up. It was when I was growing up. Only Madden people I knew was Problem and then Cole Train, Scott Cole. Scott those Cole. The only Jesus. People. Yeah, those are the only people I remember seeing Problem for my first time on like NFL Network mm-hmm. or something, <laughs> something like that. Mm-hmm. Nah, Problem Problem will always be my goat. Oh my God! Can't, I can't let that old head go. Jeez. He's always gonna be my goat. <laughs> Jesus, that's not that's not what we brought you in here to talk about. You, this is supposed to be your year. You are supposed to be better than everybody. Oh, uh, it is my year. Oh, yeah, for sure, it it is my year. Like, and and that's why people say I take mud a little bit too serious. It's not that I take mud serious. It's the fact that I I hear the little snarky, passive aggressive comments some people make under their breath or mm. little types and shit. Like I I don't forget none of it. Mm. I don't forget none of it. Oh, so who who you like the, says the, the slick like shit the, the most? oh I'm about to lose the Taylor gang like that's mm. not gonna fly that's not mm. gonna they know who they are mm. you ain't gonna tell them who they are oh I'll name drop I'm, I'm a oh, different breed oh, I'll name up? drop so who 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 you think says the most snarky shit that that you know disrespects you the most that's like the it, it's it's the it's the it's the passive aggressive shit you know what I'm saying the uh, yeah. passive aggressive shit. Mm. Let me let me get my let me get my envelope. Let me write these names down. Oh, you have an envelope. My, oh, you, you, my, you oh you so you are you like are you like Arya from from uh, Game of Thrones? You just keep saying the names wait, in your head me, before you go to bed. Every day. Yeah. So you just like, say the names like D. Croft, Joe like, Rice. Uh, Cro- Croft is cool because he's a nice guy. Croft is genuinely a man, nice fuck guy. Fuck him. Ain't no nice guys, man. You think they say that about you? Now, now the now the rest of those TNC dudes. Oh boy, the number one on the list is Jay Wall. I, I will never let Jay Wall be me. Not not this year. Jay Wall is I, number I love, one on the list. I, I think I think I'm what four and one against Jay Wall this year. It's, it's looking real okay. nice. So you are the father of of Jake. Yeah, I'm I'm Jay Wall's dad. Oh, yeah. I'm Jay Wall's mm-hmm. dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Who else? Uh oh, Shakobi. Yeah, Shakobi will never beat me this year. I'm one no against him. He he won't I mean, sniff me. Like listen, yeah. I mean, if you're capping at Shakobi, you got you. It's not you. It's not your year if you bring up hey. Shakobi. That it can't be your year and bring up hey. Shakobi. That can't. Hey, I just can't don't. Work. I don't forget any names. And then who's number three? I'm not gonna lie. That may, might be a short. Oh, salty. Salty. Oh that. my god. I hate can't let a 15 year old get under my skin. Honestly. I gotta be better than that. Yeah, salty who's and, like, and Shakobi. Who's next? Hey, this list is a bunch Ooh, of trolls. Shikobi. Jack, oh, Jack Oregon. Yeah, that's one. There we oh go. Oh my god! Like you're beefing yeah. with like the, you're at the bottom of no, barrel I just, scum. I man. just, I just, I just make sure I flood these kids every time I see them. Okay. Honest. That, that's that's the plan. And I think, I think those are my those four are biggest rivals. haters right there. Right there. Those are my four. No, those those are just the haters. Okay, you feel the me? haters. Okay. When I, if, they better hope I don't sniff a belt. They'll be getting the shout out for show. So, 
you also so this about your EA gonna, game, okay? Yeah, EA gonna cut my my interview short. I'm gonna start going crazy. Okay, I right, said so, okay. So there you go. Now I tell you, when you win a belt, you don't get much interview. They give you a good ten seconds. That's about it. Yeah, hey, that's all I need. Uh, trust me. That's that's, a, that's a good question. As my man JP asks, is who is the best player you have played this year? Ooh, the crazy part is, I'm a there's this guy, and I don't know if anyone knows him in, in the community, but I don't know who this dude is, but this Bob Laser dude <laughs> does not miss a read. I don't know who this dude is, but he does not miss a read. Oh, my He's probably God. probably the best player. Let me tell you hey, something. I, hey, Bob Laser is hell. Let me tell you something. One, you never give a, you never give credit to creep names. Anybody can do that. That's childish. So you never give them any credit. Between Bob Laser and Hustle Pilsen, they somebody. They somebody uh, they they somebody that that we know, and you don't give them any credit because it's easy to be on a creep name and just popping people. That's childish, and and those type of people will never, will never get credit well, from me. You know what I'm saying? So don't suck their dick on this podcast. That's not what's going. It's happen. hard. Well, it's hard to say. I mean, the best offense that I've played, the cluster is the hardest shit to stop ever. And then, the best defense, I give that to. K Mac and Problem. I think they're tied for the best defense that I've played. For what I do, they they bag that shit. Problem bag. You, you get bagged by problems. Preschool yeah, I mean, defense. Like, yeah. That man. That man coverage sometimes bags me. Jeez. Yeah. But other than that, nah. Nobody. Nobody else is really tough. Nah. Nobody else is really tough. Honestly, it's just yeah. mutt, right? It's just mutt, right, Chat? That's what you all tell me. It's just mutt, Taylor. Game. It's just mutt. Trust so. me, Taylor. Game, I will tell you this right now. When I was popping in Madden 16, that's the same shit they said about me. Mm-hmm. That's the same shit they said about me. Mm-hmm. That we just played Mutt. I would fuck them mm-hmm. all up on Mutt. And they'd say, oh, it's just Mutt. It's just Mutt. Swear mm-hmm. to God. That's the same. Joke was the main one. They was too good. They couldn't let nobody else in the man. Could be Madden 16. Oh, who this guy fucking people up? Oh, yeah, you know I'm saying, oh, it's only mutt. Oh, he got he got the boss. He got boss. That's Bryant. That's the only reason he scored that type yep. of shit. Yep, they was the same. Yeah, but but way. the crazy I'm part saying. is when you when you when you beat them and you and you cap, it's just mutt. But if, if but if you can't beat them, it's it's, it's a problem. They, yeah. they bring it up that you can't beat them. Like, which one is it? And honestly, like, listen, and that's how that's and that's how people. Um, that's how the man community is. Really, it's tough to really admit oh, yeah, no that doubt. somebody else is good. Um. Yeah. But ultimately, like, it's not, it's really not. And, and people say that, and I get this a lot when I do the podcast, when YouTube, when they ask me stuff like that, they'll say the man community is, they, they don't let nobody in, they're rude to new people and stuff like mm-hmm. that, or they're, they're very cliquish, which is, mm-hmm. which is so, very it's, true. It's true. Um, I, I, remember I took my, I took my lumps. I was, I was the butt of all the jokes in the I mean, I you, you still are the butt of all the jokes. Like, you yeah. haven't graduated from being the butt of the jokes. Especially yeah. my... Now, listen, you might be, like, the, the knee of all the jokes. Because Bugs will always be the butt of every Madden community joke that I tell. I would say Bugs oh, is yeah. always the ass of the jokes. Yeah, you might you be, see like, what I've been doing to Bugs. Yeah. You see what I've been doing to Bugs. Like, yeah, he's yeah. for sure the ass of the jokes yeah. now. Bugs is all the ass. But it is true that... I mean, a lot of people say that about the Madden community. is very cliquish. And that's true, but I, I feel like if you really want it, I mean, it's going. You just got to push through to the point where people start looking at you and say, "All right, he's doing okay. Like he's actually putting work in to be a part of the community." You know what I'm saying that, that's pretty much mm-hmm. how I feel about like at first, yeah, the, yeah, they not gonna want to hear nobody. You know what I'm saying? And I see Clef in the chat, like like man, what was it, man, seventeen or man, eighteen at the end of it. Clef was popping everybody. Everybody's like, man, Clef just a June goon. Clef is ass yeah. for real. I'm telling you, they and this is yeah. and honestly, as much as we talk about the man community, this kind of relates to everything. Is where when you start doing good at something, the people that are already established at that, they don't want to see you succeed. So they're gonna try yeah. to they're gonna try to like bring you down as much as possible because yeah. they don't want they don't want any competition. You trying to you trying to eat their food? Exactly. They don't want anybody else to try to creep up and 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 and. You know, be in that spotlight, and you talk about eating food. Uh, what I learned from man is that if you put work, it's enough food for everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and, and 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 people need to be open to that. And um, well, you know, so that's how it goes. When you first start, like in Fitz Man said, people think about tote game. Yeah, people that run the ball, yes, you guys are losers. Like you guys don't get out of the house. Like you, that's pretty much how I feel about people that run the ball. Really, that that's pretty much how I feel. Y'all don't leave the house. Y'all don't. Y'all don't do shit. Y'all don't. Y'all y'all live adventurous <laughs> lives. 
you know, y'all don't really have that many friends. Y'all just run. You know what I'm saying? And that's so corny. It's so goddamn boring that you spend this much time on Madden and choose to run the ball. Like, how boring is that? Like, do you never... Like, I I, 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 I love getting on these grants, but... You go to the line of scrimmage. Like I go to the line of scrimmage. I th- got to think: Is he going to blitz? Is he going to be cover two? Is he going to be cover three? Who's he going to man up? If he blitzes off the right, where will his alert go? Where his alert go that way? Is he going to play hard flash? Is he going to play cloud flash? Is he going to cross man this guy? Is he going to you know? Is he going to just rely on his X factors to get to me? Is he going to play a cover four shell, a cover three shell? Is he going to deep quarter that outside guy? Is he going to deep half that guy? Do I got to step up in the pocket? Which way do I have to drift with the quarterback? When can I throw the ball? I have to worry about that. All these assholes worry about is pressing A. And they think they're fucking good. That's the worst part. And they think they're fucking good. And they press it. Is, it, is my left tackle going to see one? Yes. My left tackle that's it. Is my left tackle going to see God one? damn bums, man. Can I bounce this down to the That's outside? pretty much all it is. Just to talk A. Hey, that's it. And, I, <laughs> and honestly, if that's how you want to play. But to me, the chess match of passing the ball is what is so much fun about the game. Like that that's all that, that it's not about that is wrong. Maybe y'all have fun pressing A and running the ball. But for me, the fun in man comes when you're past that's one thousand percent what's fun about the game. Finding out how to beat a blitz, finding out how to beat a coverage, finding out how to predict that coverage and calling the right play at the right time, that's what's fun for me. And and, and, and to me that, that that's pretty much why I don't like running the ball. That's all. But you know, but at the same time, when I won my belt I did run the ball. Shout out to the sub, man. We're closing it on 900 subs. For me, when I did run the ball, I did run the ball. Because at the end of the day, and, and I'll tell you this a thousand times, when I ran the ball, I remember I played Hollywood, who was the, like the best player at the time, right? And I, I was getting to the line of scrimmage, and I was like, when I pressed A to run the ball, I said, Lord, please, let me get five yards. And when I say, Lord, please, it pretty much, it, it, to me, it's like, man, I just hope, I hope I get five yards. I hope I get four yards. God... And I remember I played True Boy, rest in peace, too. I played him, and he had Jet. He had Jet. Um, Whatchamacallit. He blew Jet out, right? And Jet was like, man, his pressure is something serious. So when I played True Boy, it was me versus True Boy. If I won, I made it to the next level. Pretty much how it was. The first play of the, of the game, the first play on my offense, I was scared as shit to pass. I didn't want to pass. I, I was like, yo, I just want to run. And the Lord blessed me. The Lord came down and said, W... Today is your day. We're going to bless you with the inside zone to the crib. First play. And I said, Lord, thank you. I didn't earn that. You know, it could have easily been a gain of two. But the Lord blessed me with a run to the crib. And I prayed for that, and I got that run. And that's pretty much what runners do when they snap the ball and call A. You know, they get blessed. Pretty much how it goes. And now, tell the gang, J. Wall is in the chat. You know what I'm saying? And, J. Wall, while you were gone... He, um, my man Taylor said he is your father. You know hey, there's nothing Jay Wall can say to me. Every time Jay Wall talks about, he don't need to worry about nothing else, honestly. Mm. Mm. So I heard Jay Wall is Taylor Gang. Y'all the biggest rivals right now on the Xbox leaderboards. It's not. A, it's not a rivalry if one team ain't. I'm, I'm gonna mm. keep it a buck. Mm. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Mm. Mm. See, I like how y'all y'all rivals now. Me myself, I only have like. Like four rivals in Madden that I like actually want to beat, and those are people that are like have done better than me in Madden. Like like Skimbo, I want to beat. Like one, I have a winning record versus him, but uh, you know, I find that as a rival. Hot Shot, my guy with the sub, man. Hot Shot, I've been throwing around these 2K players on the Madden streets. For me, it's like problem. Even though I be kicking the shit out of problem, but he's like he's on my echelon of player. Like Skimbo, Drenny, even though Drenny, Drenny and Kid be kicking the shit out of me, I feel like those are like the guys I strive to have rivalries with. And for me. I'm glad that you and J Wall are like the same level of player right now that y'all on that that tier. Like y'all like tier four. You know what I'm saying? Not tier one, not two, three, but y'all like tier four and it's a nice rivalry. I like that. You know what I'm saying? And tell again, I'll tell you this. When they start talking about let's bet, let's play, that's when you know you under their skin. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I already know. You yeah, see I'm not know, responding. Yeah. I already know. I don't even need to type in the chat no more. He know the deal. Tell him, tell him you a leader. Cause my, cause my, okay, my thing is here it is. I can kick somebody's teeth in and then they'll get mad after I can't be like, oh, let's play for this, let's play for that. If you can't beat me for free, what in the hell makes you think you about to beat me for some money? You ain't that mm. different. You ain't different See, with the bread on the line. And for me, honestly, I, I, I will tell you, and, and this is different for me, and now you said that different when they play for money. When I match up with some somebody... Some people are different. When I match up, when I, dude, I'm, I want to win the game. Like, I might, pre- exactly. pre- I might try shit 
I might do some crazy shit, but I would probably do that for for money as well. Not nothing crazy, but it's just to me, I would I play the same way, honestly. And, yeah, some, and, and some people I, I need, feel like need extra incentive to try the video game. Like, I'm trying lose. to beat everyone's yeah, skull. I really I'm don't trying to beat everybody's yeah. skull. In. I don't care if it's for a penny free. I'm trying to beat everyone's skull. Honestly. Ooh. Well, hey, I, hey, I kid, like the game, hey, well, hey yeah. not a hey, not trying doesn't make you cool, kids. You can always try. Not trying does not make you cool. This is true. I mean, there's nothing wrong with not trying. You know what I'm saying. No, why? Why is I, I feel like every game you get in is you, there's nothing wrong with taking this. Now I I play around a lot. Like I really do. I lab a lot in games. I mess around, but but when I play somebody I know is good. Like when I know, I, cause you know when somebody's good. So. When I play somebody, I don't really, like, lab as much. And I do take them games seriously. I mean, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't try. You know, that's just, I mean, certain people. If you're not trying, man, why are you doing it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean. Right. So, Taylor Gang is, he is the JCC, he's the janitor of the JCC. He has the keys to the JCC. He's only allowing certain people in. That's pretty much how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Taylor, Taylor don't like Papa. He don't like playing against Papa. He likes playing against these little kids. When he see Papa, when he see the grizzly bear on the other side, he don't like that Cause, shit. Cause here's, the, here's the thing, yo. I'm going to give you all a little word of advice. Dub yells at you guys about running the ball to make sure you pass so he can scream at you with a sound. That's how he's honestly tricking you. That's how he blew me out. Uh, he was in dollar the whole game. I didn't run a single inside. He cry, and no, I got blown out. No, it's a player game. Because you're not a loser. You know, you want to be a loser, or do you want to you you want to be a winner? Now listen, you can win running the ball. Like you can win running the ball. Like that. That's cool. But what did you really do? Like seriously, what did you really accomplish? When I asked you, you didn't beat me mentally. You didn't outsmart me. You didn't outthink me. You just pressed A, and the game blessed you. You didn't really win. And that's how I feel about runners. They don't really win when they win. They just got lucky. That's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and as much as... And I don't even want to give Drenny like the... I don't even want to call Drenny a runner. But he is a runner. But because he's the only person that they cling to that has had any success just running the ball. But I feel like Drenny just... I feel like he's different than just a runner. I feel like he... I don't know. Maybe... maybe chat, tell me if I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying that, that that that's just I, I feel like journey is a little bit different than just a toter really. Yeah, now I I feel like he can't be a toter. Yeah, yeah, but journey more like problem. To, like yeah, journey, journey got some dots though. Journey has a couple dots though. None of these toters don't have no dots. None of these toters have dots. If you had dots, you wouldn't tote. Why the <laughs> like seriously? You tote because that's how you can. Compete. Hey boys, if you don't got no dots, man, just go grab a ebook. That's it. That's it. If you had dots, you would pass. See, see hey, look at look at me. Though. I'm number one on the leaderboard because one, I have no life, but two, I'm using a year old ebook and it's working. Year old ebook is working. Hey, awesome. Oh, because no, that's the point. So y'all never understand my philosophy when I'm, when when you guys watch me play Madden. Listen. Yeah, I could run. Yeah, somebody could be dropping 11 people in coverage. Yes, a bazooka can call fucking dive and get 10 yards. Hip, hip, hooray. That's not my goal. To be the best passer you can be in Madden, you have to be able to pass when they know you're going to pass, when they're defending your pass, and actually when they know what play you're going to run. That is when you become a good passer. Anybody can pass, run, 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 pass. But if you can pass when your opponent knows exactly what you want to do, they know exactly you're going to pass. They know who you're going to. They know what. If you still can pass, that is when you become elite passing the ball, period. And that's why what I strive to get to every time I play a game of Madden, I strive to get to that point. Because, yeah, once I get to that point, of course, I can always go back and run the ball. Yeah, I can always go back and press inside zone, of course. But can I get to that point, that elite point passing by running the ball all the time? No, I don't think it's possible. You know, so that's pretty much how, how I get it. You know what I'm saying? J-Wall really sick about this Taylor Gang stuff. Hey, J-Wall called me a toter. Check those leaderboards. I want to see J-Wall's passing stats per game. Actually, mm -hmm. he just let me off. Mm -hmm. I got to see. Mm -hmm. 
I, I, I just just tell them catch me on the leaderboards. You know what I'm saying that, that that that's pretty much what you gotta tell you know. them. That's all. Everybody want gamble. All these mad people want gamble. I might have to. J Wall might have to pop up on the stream, and we might have to discuss this this rivalry that y'all got. Cause y'all y'all might be the biggest rivalry in Madden Twenty so far. You know what I'm saying, might be. I average thirty rushing yards a game. That's not toting. That's three. That's three carries a game. All right. That's first of all, I will tell you what. I I probably run the least. I don't know. I don't think there's a man that can tell me. I don't think there's a man that can tell me he he run less than I run. I don't think there's yeah. one. He only averaged ten rushing yards a game. Yeah, and J Wall is at eleven. Oh, I'm I'm only at ten rushing yards a game. Mm -hmm. And he's at 11? Yep. Champion. Champion. Right here, boys. Nobody runs less than me. Nobody. And my 10 yards are probably straight from the quarterback, too. Why well, run, man? Y'all want to watch runners? I th my, my, my man's doing the glitchy stuff where I can't look at the little boys. Yeah, I just, I just got in. Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, man, that's, that's, that's pretty much how I feel. The game is cool. Um, J Wall and Taylor Gang not gonna play. You know what I'm saying, and first of all, J Wall is the most boring mic game ever. You know what I'm saying, that's how I feel. Why run when you can pass? Like why? Like man, I just, I just don't understand. And you know, there's a lot of y'all in here that aren't like established Madden players. Like if you're Jay Bird or you're Fitz, like y'all can't y'all. The, the, the ship has sailed on y'all passing the ball. Like y'all can't do it. Y'all don't know how to put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all just y'all can't pass, so y'all keep running. But if you're a new man player, you're just coming up in the game. You want to get better. Pass, man. Pass, 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 pass. Jay Wall, if you don't get the hell out of here, see how I won't put Jay Wall, man. It'll make some. I I'll tell you what, tell game. Oh, no. He's grinding mad and he got a good attitude. Much like Jay Bird, much like Fitz. That's why I. That's why y'all the homies. Y'all grind mad and y'all have a good attitude. I just tease y'all because y'all runners. That's all. And y'all suck. Listen, D, look, look, Lucky Lars. That's that's a, a that's a misconception offensively. You can be physical on offense and not run the ball. The physicality really on defense though. That's pretty much where it goes. You know what I'm saying? Once a man, once you start hitting on defense, that's what it's all about, really. J Wall can join the chat. Like y'all, y'all keep telling me like I take join. Like I can't like call him. Like all he gotta do, like there is no skill gap in running the ball. Jesus Christ. We'll hop in, hop in the, we'll hop in the Discord. Uh, is there anybody on? If we talk about evasive, is there anybody on Rays that have evasive? Uh, I think Tariq Cohen has it. Tariq Cohen, like, really? Okay. Yeah, there's not a lot of really shifty, shifty, shifty running backs in the NFL anymore. Sean McCoy should have it. Shit. And mm. Miles Sanders will have it. This upcoming halfway through the year, they will update Miles Sanders' fantasy, man. You guys drafting your team, get Miles Sanders. He's going to be a goon this year. I honestly feel like maybe uh, call me crazy here, chat, chat. Maybe five defensive X factors and only three on offense. Make the defense better. Give some of these linebackers, some of these DBs, secure tackler. Give them enforcer, whatever it may be, and maybe we can get somebody in the secondary can hit. What do y'all think about that? Maybe more on defense to make defense a little more powerful than offense. Is that crazy, or would that be a little better? What do you think, Taylor? I mean, they would just fumble even more and complain and cry even more. No. Okay. I'm not. I I just get sick of hearing people complain about. I mean, just get out of bounds, fall to the ground. I hate hearing people complain. I don't really complain about anything in this game. I just deal with it. Mm -hmm. If the game like just just deal with it. I mean, you're gonna have to play it anyway. You play it every day. Just deal with it. Get better. Mm. So you got good attitude. So that's why you want to succeed. If you have a good attitude, you're gonna be able to succeed, chat, brother. Like. I don't got time to cry over how the game is. If the game is broken. I'm just gonna be good at the broken game. Then when they fix it, I'm gonna be good again. Uh, I, I, and when D cross uh, the uh, Tom Brady forcing fumbles, and it pretty much goes, pretty much goes to the point that 
I just think hit sticking is too easy. And I feel like a hit, the hit stick animation in general should be reserved. Listen to me this. Hit stick animations in general should be reserved for people with like 85 plus hit power and 80 tackling. You have to have good range to be able to get some of these ridiculous hit sticks. Anthony Brown, somebody, even Apke, even more of these guys, Obi that don't have crazy hit power, shouldn't be getting these type of animations. And I think that would help the game so much to where, I mean, back... Even in Madden 17, man, I remember I had Sean Taylor, I had Harrison Smith, I had these goons because they put they put shoulders into people. They they just really hit stick people. And I feel like now it's way too many people that can hit stick. And I feel like if it was reserved, let's just say, let's put number 85, let's just say 80 plus hit power. I think that'd be a decent number. And of course, when you move up to the 90s, that's when you get. It should almost be like, hear me on this chat. Remember how spin move last year was 82 spin? You could get that animation. Maybe hit sticks should be the hit stick animations should be based on hit power. Okay, yeah, you can get a hit stick at 80 hit power, but the hit sticks you get at 90 hit power, those are the ones where the, the running backs flying across the screen, or the, you know, the, the, just the heads whipping back and the balls coming out, and you know, and their legs are breaking and stuff like that. So the higher your hit power get, the more hit stick animations you can unlock, the more abilities you have the hit stick. So that's pretty much how I think maybe it's it can help a little bit. Win. Who's here? Well, what's up, Wu? This is a surprise. Surprised to have you. Nice to hear from you. Nice to talk to you. How is your Tuesday going? Looking for blood. Looking for blood. So uh, now I'm gonna ask you these questions, Wu, as we bring you on here, Wu. Um, one, how do you feel about the fumbles? Too many. Too many? Okay. Can't... Now, when well, you play, when you Wu, when you play the game, do you play on conservative? Do you play on balance? How do you play? Balanced. Oh, okay. Just running the hit sticks. Yeah, you're right. You probably you pretty much do still get hit stick. So you play on balanced. Uh, do you have like? Do you have Marcus Allen? Do you do any of the evasive or arm bar or anything? No, it's girly bunch. Girl, dots. girly hey, bunch hey. and dots. Okay. Hey, so, real quick, real quick. Wu hmm. complains about fumbles. He runs stick and throws the tight end flat every play. He gets hit stick thirty times a game. Nope. I mean, at that point, yeah, that's something that I found and then found the way to get Marcus Allen in that spot so I could have somebody with a little bit more carry uh, in that situation. And I feel like um, the tight ends are so bad in Mutt now that you, they just do get blasted. You know, even Kittle only has, like, what, 81 speed or something? Like, he's not fast, and, like, they're just going to get his stick to death. So so I, I feel like if, I, if I'm running bunch or if I run cluster, which is pretty much a similar thing, where you're going to throw in the flats and take your flats, right? I feel like you kind of have to play on balanced or on conservative because you are, if you are, do throw in the flats that much, you are going to get hit stick upwards of 10 to 20 times a game. Like, 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 man, you, you want the ball to never pop out? Yeah. Run out of bounds. You're right there at the sideline. Run out fumble, of bounds. I mean, the, the fumbles would be fine if it was actual defense in the game. Like, if you fumble and then you can't stop nobody, you're just dead. Yeah. I mean, okay. Well, now I'll go back. Let's talk about the how you feel about the ball hawk and the user. I like it. I think it's pretty good. I like the user, actually. You can actually throw it through his head and stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, and But I think once we learn, like, the angles you can go for picks, the angles you got to swat, and the, the different depth you have to be at to get picks, I think it's going to change uh, how we feel about it. Don't you actually have to have a better user. I like it. Yeah, I think, I you think it makes the user little, better. Yeah, I do think you do have to have a little bit better user, a little bit better stick. And uh, the last thing, well, I mean, how do you feel about the X-Factors? How do you feel about the D-Line? How do you feel about the, the running back X-Factors? Uh, I don't know. Salary cap is good, but Mutt, they need to turn the block sheds up, I think. The block sheds up? Like, make them shed faster? Like, make them block shed better than Mutt. Oh, wait. You mean Mutt like the one where... You, no, you tripping. You mean you now. The run of the pass. What do you mean there's you no defense? You have to defense? send seven or... Like, now I used to believe that Wu, and then what I did, I put I put stars on my defensive line and rush three, and I was cool. Yeah. Mine, mine don't shed. You might you might know something I don't. You got the stars on their feet. Yeah, I got Khalil Mack. I got straight hand. So you, you, I can't help you too much, but Khalil Mack ain't it. I'm gonna just leave. I'm gonna just leave it there. Khalil Mack ain't it. And saying, but no, for real, I feel like the sheds are good in, in dollar. You put three superstars, D linemen, because you know I'm a heavy seven, 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 eight type of person. 
But once I saw, I can't lie, I saw Clef and I saw Henry play like three games where they both were just rushing three. Well, Clef mixed up a little bit more. But Henry just rushed three. And, and, and Clef is somebody that I see somebody have great pocket presence. And he really couldn't do shit. And it's not that people weren't open. He just couldn't get the ball off. I was like, all right, this is my defense. I've seen enough. So put put three stars on your D line. Yeah, yeah, you gotta get Von Miller, get you Aaron Donald right there in the nose tag, right there in the nose tackle, and get you Reggie White or Strahan. See now, I'll tell you this, yeah. chat. Now you only Khalil Mack isn't it because he's not a ninety overall. Because he's not ninety overall, he doesn't get three abilities, so he can't get that edge threat or that power specialist. Once you get the edge threat or the power specialist, move, it will change your life. So that's why Khalil Mack isn't it. That's only for you guys, man. You that's only knowledge that you get here at the Needed Podcast. So make sure you guys t- take good advantage of that. You know what I'm saying make sure Khalil Mack ain't it. Once he get a new card, new upgrades, he's gonna be once he can get to a ninety overall and can get that edge specialist, boom, he'll be a goon. So that's how I go. Now, on to the Gus and Glory, Woo. What's your record versus Taylor game this year? I ain't played him. He's been he's been hiding. He's been hot. <laughs> oh, no okay. Right oh, oh, right now. Ain't what nobody in the right community now? has never known me to hide. Oh, you're here right now. Is that what's going down, Woo? Um, I mean, Taylor game might duck, so I really can't. I mean, you know. I ain't never duck. Come on. Also, oh, you want to boot up? No, let's get it. Also, oh, can we get a can we get a stream of this Taylor game? Yeah, let's get it. Give me right, uh, give me twenty. Twenty minutes. Wait, right now, I can't. Damn, I can't get fifteen. What you need fifteen? What you got? Take a shit or something? Yeah, no. so you good? All right, all right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'll boot it up. Okay. I'll boot it up. I'll boot it up. <laughs> Oh, will you gambling? Will you betting? Heck no. Oh, you ain't betting? All right, say no more. Y'all playing mutt, straight mutt? Yeah, let's yep. do it. Okay, okay. Yeah, see, y'all get caught up. See, chat, y'all need to come. Y'all need to get right here, chat. Y'all need to get right here, chat. Is that it's not about what you play for. I, I, listen, you could. I'd rather I'd rather lose 500 to, to somebody else then lose a free game to Siwoo. I'll tell you that. Like, y'all, I don't know how y'all don't understand that. Like, playing Siwoo isn't about what you're playing for. It's the fact you're playing Siwoo. You know what I'm saying? That, that, and, and that's a big deal. You know what I'm saying? Well, you want, you want to boot up? Like that and beat every person in the world. Well, you want to boot up the, the mixer? I'll put the link in the chat and we'll go there. What's up? Whatever. It don't matter. Boot up the mixer, man. We got to get Woo shit popping. And tell you. Both of y'all boot up. Oh, all right, for sure. Hey, both of y'all boot up so we can have the dual, the dual angles. I'm not going to put this on the podcast. YouTube, if you watch this podcast on YouTube, I'm not going to put the game. We are already up here at, um, we are at over an hour on this podcast. So I'm not going to add this. I'm, it's going to be exciting to watch these two play. But one, Woo, what's, what's your uh, mixer, Woo? Siwoo 92, two O's. Siwoo 92 with two O's. Make sure you check Mixer.com slash Siwoo92 with two O's. I will put that in the description. So if you're looking for Siwoo on Mixer, hopefully he keeps grinding that, man. Twitch holding him back, but he's on Mixer. That link will be below. And Taylor Gang, what's the Twitch? Is it just Taylor Gang? Taylor 10? Taylor with, a, with an extra G. With an extra yeah, G. Yeah, you ain't saying nothing to me after the last time I played you. So there you go. So both both Taylor Gang links for his his uh, Twitch and Siwoo's Mixer will be in this description below. So make sure y'all check it out. So y'all don't want to miss this game. Y'all don't want to miss them when they go live. This was the Needed Podcast. This was episode 41. We talked about the games one week. Next week, we'll, uh, what's going on between now and next week? I believe the Mudhead, the the end of the Mudhead, that, that six people competing for 10K, which Clef is going to win. That's going to happen. Um, some more Mudhead events we could talk about. Some more arm bars. Hopefully a patch. Maybe, maybe not. I think the first one doesn't happen until 30 days. So definitely watch this. So if you're on YouTube, hit this like button. And comment if you're on SoundCloud, do the same, man. You guys can check me out live, twitch.tv slash dub dot every Tuesday. That's when the podcast goes down.